Welcome back to part seven of our blood lecture. We were on disorders of hemostasis and bleeding disorders. The next bleeding disorder is hemophilia. It includes several different hereditary bleeding disorders. There's hemophilia A, which is the most common type, 77% of all cases, which is due to a factor eight deficiency. Hemophilia B is a factor nine deficiency and hemophilia C is a factor 11 deficiency and it is a milder, milder disorder. Symptoms of hemophilia include prolonged bleeding, especially in the joint cavities. Treatments for hemophilia include injections of genetically engineered factors. That has eliminated the need for plasma transfusions and also the risk of contracting hepatitis or HRV. Disseminated intravascular coagulation, or DIC, is a disorder that includes both widespread clotting and severe bleeding. The widespread clotting occurs in intact blood vessels, blocking the blood flow. Severe bleeding follows because residual blood is unable to clot because the clotting factors are being depleted. DIC can occur in septicemia, incompatible blood transfusions, or complications in pregnancy. Our next topic is blood transfusion. The cardiovascular system minimizes the effects of blood loss by one, reducing bl blood volume, I'm sorry, one, reducing volume of affected blood vessels, and two, stepping up the production of RBCs. The body can compensate for only so much blood loss. A loss of 15 to 30% of your blood causes pallor and weakness. A loss of more than 30% results in potentially fatal severe shock. Transfusion red blood cells. Whole blood transfusions are used only when blood loss is rapid and substantial. Infusions of packed red blood cells or PRBCs, which are um, blood that has the plasma and white blood cells removed, are preferred when restoring the oxygen carrying capacity. Blood banks usually separate donated blood into components. The shelf life of blood is about 35 days. Human blood groups of donated blood must be determined because the transfusion reactions can be fatal. Blood typing determines these groups. Red blood cell membranes bear many different antigens. An antigen is anything perceived as foreign that can generate an immune response. Red blood cell antigens are referred to as agglutinogens because they promote agglutination. Mismatched transfused blood is perceived as foreign and may be agglutinated and destroyed. This is a potentially fatal reaction. Humans have at least 30 naturally occurring red blood cell antigens. The presence or absence of each antigen is used to classify blood cells into different groups. Some blood groups like MNS, Duffy, Kell, and Lewis are only weak agglutinogens. Those are not usually typed unless the patient will be receiving several transfusions. The antigens of A, B, O, and RH blood groups cause the most vigorous transfusion reactions. Therefore, they are the major groups that are typed. So the types are A, B, A, B, and O. So the A, B, O blood groups. Based on the presence or absence of two agglutinogens, A and B, on the surface of red blood cells, the type of blood is determined. Type A has only the A agglutinogen. Type B has only the B agglutinogen. Type AB has both A and B agglutinogens. Type O has neither A nor B agglutinogens. The blood may contain performed anti-A or anti-B antibodies or glutenins. They act against transfused red blood cells with the ABO antigens not present on the recipient's red blood cells. 
For example, if a patient has type A blood, their red blood cells have the, only the A agglutinogen on their surface. In the plasma, they will have type anti-B antibodies. So if they were to receive type B blood, their anti-B antibodies would attack that. Anti-A or anti-B form in blood at about two months of age, reaching adult levels by 10 to 8 to 10 years of age. Table 17.4 shows the differences between the AB, A, B, and O blood types. Showing here on this first column, we have the blood group. So for the blood group AB, the red blood cell has both A and B agglutinogens. And we look at the blood group or blood cell, we see the A agglutinogen and well as the B agglutinogens. In its plasma, there are no antibodies. If it had an anti A or an anti B antibody, it would attack itself. So that's why the AB blood group does not have any antibodies. The blood that can be received can be A, B, AB blood or O blood. Therefore, AB blood group is a universal recipient because it can receive any blood group. Blood group B has the B antigen on its surface. So here are the red blood cells and it has only the B antigens. In its plasma, it has anti-A agglutinins. So we have the anti-A antibodies. So if we were to give a B-typed person A blood, their blood would attack the transfused blood because it contains anti-A antibodies. So the blood that B-typed blood can receive is only B as well as O. Blood group A has the A antigens on it, and it has anti-B antibodies in its plasma. Therefore, type A people can receive the A blood as well as the O blood. Blood group O has no antigens on its surface, so it has nothing. However, in its plasma, it has both anti-A and anti-B antibodies. It can only receive type O. However, it is considered the universal donor because it doesn't have any antigens on its surface. So if it were to be given to any of the types of blood, there would be nothing for the other blood to attack. So that's why it's a universal donor, okay? This um, area here goes into how frequent these blood groups are found. So in general, this AB type blood group is the rarest. And the least rare is the O group. In addition to just the A, B, and O typing, there is also typing for RH. There are 52 named RH agglutinogens, or RH factors. The C, D, and E are the most common. RH plus indicates the presence of D antigen. 85% of Americans are RH plus. Anti-RH antibodies are not spontaneously formed in RH negative individuals. The anti-RH antibodies only form if an RH negative individual receives RH positive blood or the RH negative mom is carrying an RH positive feces. A second exposure to the RH positive blood will result in a typical transfusion reaction. So because of this, the first exposure, nothing happens. It's the second exposure that causes 
this blood um, transfusion reaction. All right, homeostatic imbalance, the hemolytic disease of a newborn, also called erythroblastosis fetalis. It only occurs in Rh negative moms with the Rh positive fetus. During the first pregnancy, the Rh negative mom is exposed to the Rh positive blood of the fetus during delivery. The first baby is born healthy, but the mother synthesizes anti Rh antibodies. So during the second pregnancy, the mom's anti-RH antibodies cross the placenta and destroys the red blood cells of the RH positive baby. The baby is treated with pre-birth transfusions and then exchange transfusions after birth. Rogam serum contains anti-RH, which can prevent the RH negative mother from becoming sen sensitized. All right, transfusion reactions. They occur if mismatched blood is infused. The donor cells are attacked by the recipient's plasma agglutinins. They agglutinate and clog small vessels. They rupture and release hemoglobin into the bloodstream. This results in diminished oxygen carrying capacity, decreased blood flow beyond the blocked vessel, and hemoglobin in the kidney tubules can lead to renal failure. The symptoms of a transfusion reaction include fever, chills, low blood pressure, a rapid heartbeat, nausea, and vomiting. The patient is treated um, to preventing the kidney damage with fluids and diuretics to wash out the hemoglobin. So as we mentioned before, type O is a universal donor, donor and type AB is a universal recipient. Autologous transfusion is when a patient pre-donates his or her own blood that is stored and is available if needed. Blood typing. Donor blood is mixed with antibodies against the common agglutinogens. So if agglutinogen is present, the clumping of the red blood cells will occur. The blood is typed for ABO and for RH factor in the same manner. Cross-matching is typing between specific donor and recipients. They mix the recipient's serum with the donor red blood cells, and they mix the recipient's red blood cells with the donor serum. This shows blood typing, and we're going to um, do this in lab as well. So we're testing AB blood. So AB blood has on the red blood cells the A and B antigens. However, in the plasma, there is no anti-A or anti-B. So if we have the A and B blood here, we're going to put anti-A in this, and it's going to react. It has the agglutination. And anti-B, also we see the agglutination. So we know that this blood is AB blood. For type A blood, it only has the antigen A on it. In its serum, it's going to have, or I'm sorry, in its plasma, it's going to have anti-Bs. So if we um, take type A blood and give an anti-A serum to it, it's going to agglutinate. Anti-B isn't going to do anything. Type B blood, we can see that the agglutination reaction occurs with anti-B serum. Remember, type O blood does not contain any antigens. So anti-A and anti-B serum is not going to cause an agglutination reaction. Restoring blood volume. Death from shock may result from low blood volume. The volume must be replaced immediately with a normal saline or multiple electrolyte solution, like Ringer solution, that mimics plasma electrolyte composition. Replacement of volume restores adequate circulation, but does not replace the oxygen carrying capacities of red blood cells. Okay, we're going to stop here and pick up with the next part.